Hello, this is Roland. Today, we're going to continue with part two of my new series, How and Why to Meditate. Or better yet, why meditate and how to meditate. Last time, I talked about the fact that most people get upset too easily. So you need to find a way where you can go out in the world without getting upset. Okay? And I said that the, a proper meditation helps you to be a little bit detached, a little bit distant. It's actually what you had when you were a little child, before you became upset, before the world emotionalized you. A little bit of distance. You go out in the world and you can be a, a mom, dad, go to work and have recreation and sports and do whatever you do, okay? But just not so emotional, okay? Just a little bit where you, where you're able, where you have taken a mental step back things. Okay, so that's what I talked about in part one. Now part two, I want to talk about, again, why meditate. And part two is the fact that most people are lost between their two ears. The average person, uh, I heard a professional hypnotist, a very excellent one, who, who does um, um, uh, hypnotism shows for big corporations. He goes to their conventions. They pay him lots and lots of money because he's, he's very good, very professional. And he does an excellent job. He was talking about meditation. He said that most people are in a trance most of the time. He said, if you're distracted, if you're lost in thinking, if you're thinking about what happened yesterday, if you're thinking about what you're gonna do, what you plan to do, what you might do, if you're worried about what might happen, if you're just daydreaming, you don't even know what you're thinking about then you are in a mild trance state. You're not in reality. You're separated from reality. You're in a world of illusion, see? And also concentration. When you concentrate, when you study, it puts you in that mild trance state, okay? Well, um, when you're in that state, you're not totally there. You can be driving down the freeway, thinking about something like what happened, okay? or at work, for example, or thinking about what you're going to do when you get home, what you're going to eat, where you're going to go to the restaurant. And you can be thinking about something like that. And you can actually drive right past the freeway exit you were supposed to take. Or you can be driving and then all of a sudden you snap out of it and you think, how long have I been driving? I don't have any memory at all of, what I, of the things that I passed, the, the lights that I went through. See, you were not there. You were on automatic pilot, but your your mind was not totally there. Okay, so people go through life that way. Now do you see why a lot of people mess things up? They, 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 what you need is presence of mind. Presence of mind, where you're detached, little, little bit detached, little bit distant from the world. But you are, you're attached to your inner ground of good. You're attached to the inner light. You're attached to, you, to, to, um, to that internal fount of wisdom and common sense and understanding. Okay? You know how sometimes, like if you're a parent, when you, in one of those moments when you have, when you have love, you feel love and your little child is there and and she has a question or she's crying or something and all of a sudden you just you you understand see you, you understand it's wordless you understand what's happening and you're able to help her it's called understanding okay you don't have to figure anything out you just see what's happening in the moment and then with love with common sense, with patience, you can handle a situation. So that's what you need is presence of mind in everything you do. Everything you do needs presence of mind. And then you won't mess up. See, if, if, if you say, say you have a little um, disagreement with your part, partner, it should remain a, a friendly uh, difference of opinion. See, difference of opinion is okay. See, um, and it should, what, who is right? It shouldn't be who is right, but what is right. So if you have an attitude of, um, of wanting to do what's right, 
and you have an open mind and friend and friendly attitude of friendliness okay and problem solving and you're not angry and you're not resentful then you have presence of mind but as soon as you become angry or become resentful or get pulled into an argument, then you then you then you fall away from presence of mind, and you fall into your thoughts. Remember, I said people are lost in their thoughts. You fall into your thoughts, and then you look there for some something to say, and then some answer pops out of your mind, and you say it, and it's the wrong thing. The wrong thing. It didn't have love in it. It was probably in an anger, and you think, "Oh God, what did I say that for?" See. So you need presence of mind. So. Um, I want to keep these little videos relatively short. Okay, I don't want to make them too long. I want to keep it short. You need presence of mind, okay? Because you, right now you're probably spending most of your time. Oh, this professional hypnotist, the one I told you about, the, the prof very, he's excellent, and he has a PhD in psychology too. So he not only is 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 good at what he does, but he understands it. He said that most people spend probably spend 85 percent of their time lost between their two ears. See, they're not totally in reality. But you need to be in reality. You need to be in reality where the birds are singing. They call that in the, in the eternal now, in the moment. Okay? See, you all know that. You've heard that. See, a lot of religions talk about that too, don't they? Being in the eternal now, in the present moment. When you, when you stand back from being lost in thoughts, okay? Because you want to know the truth. See how the see how an added, you have to have an attitude of wanting the truth. So let's say again, there's a little disagreement between you, a little difference of opinion between you and your partner. Let's say, or you and your child, or you and anybody. If you really and truly want to do the right thing, see, and you want what is right to prevail, doesn't matter who's right. See, it, it's what's right. You want what's right to prevail. Okay, you won't know what you don't know what to say. And maybe you don't know what's right, but you really and truly want to know what's right, and you'd like what's right to be done, what's fair, what's just, see? With that kind of an attitude, then you stay in the present moment, because you're searching. You're not going into your thinking for something clever. And you know that thinking it can, can be tricky, can be wrong, see? So you, you remain very aware, you're in the moment, and then all of a sudden you'll see, chances are you'll see what is right, see? So that gives you a wonderful attitude of, of, um, of friendly neutrality. See, it's a universal thing. We all, we all can have that. People from all countries, all nations, all races, all backgrounds can, can have that. It's called, you know, it's common sense. It's, it's a universal wordless knowing. That's what you need to, to be in touch with in the present. So the meditation that I have, the proper meditation, it, it, it shows you. It's a little tool that helps you get started, to stand back and be in the, the moment. So now perhaps you can see why a lot of meditations are just are just absolutely the wrong thing. Because what they do is they, they encourage you to, to get lost in, in thinking, in imagination, in fantasy, in thinking of rosy images, positive images. See? Or they have you, or they try to have you blank the mind, which is not, which is not good either. No. You, 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 you just simply stand back from thought. That's all. You stand back. So you're in the moment. Doesn't mean that you don't think. It means that you're not lost in thinking. See. And then uh, this, when you learn how to do this, it's very easy to learn. You can learn it in six minutes. Then you'll carry it with you all the time. And it'll, you'll begin to snap out of your daydreams more and more. You'll be driving along and notice you're lost in a daydream. You'll snap out. Then you'll be in the present. You'll be a better driver, a safer driver, instead of being lost in thought. See? You'll be talking to someone and you feel yourself getting pulled into something. See? Then you stand, take a step back. You remain in the moment. Okay? There's protection in that. There's wisdom in that. See? It's very beautiful. My name is Roland.